February the 2nd, 2015, you know, and on January the 9th, Rock Nation Throne Boxing is what they called it, had their first initial call. It was um, Dusty Hernandez, who is a Rock Nation fighter, versus uh, Tommy Rayon, who is a Rock Nation fighter. On the undercard, you had Toriano Johnson defeat, I forgot who he was fighting, but I know Toriano Johnson, you can associate with him, um, associate him to... Um, um, Curtis Stevens, he almost beat Curtis Stevens, and then Curtis Stevenson went on to get knocked out by, um, well, not knocked out, but beat down by Hassan Endon. But moving on, I don't want to uh, confuse you. As it stands right now, February 2nd, 2015, Rock Nation Sports, Jay Z's company, and Gary Shaw Productions is no longer together. So, meaning Rock Nation, yes, still has Andre Ward. They still have Andre Ward. They have a three fight Fox Sports deal. Um, and their first card was January the 9th. They got two more. But those Gary Shaw production um, fighters who they had, Brian Bye Bye Jennings, 19 and 0 with 10 KOs, who is still going to be taking on Vladimir Klitschko April the 25th, 2015, in Madison Square Garden. Uh, yourself right here, T Street Controversy. T Street Controversy Live will be there. I'll be covering the press conference, the post fight press conference. Both of the workouts, interviews, I'll be there ringside. Yes, so I'm still going to be covering that fight. Um, they had two miles to Laura May, who on December the 6th, 2014, took on um, Gabriel Rosado. No, took two miles to Laura May, who took on Hammer and Hank Lundy on the undercard of Gabriel Rosado versus David Lemieux. Darlies Perez, who took on uh, Yorkis Gamboa a year and a half ago. So basically what I'm saying is they lost, and Turiano Johnson, they lost a good, solid, stable I mean, um, good solid stable of boxers, you know, that were that were in in line for world titles or Brian Jennings in a world title fight. But understand right now that Rock Nation is cool. If you look at actually what they were doing, you know, and I full wholeheartedly wholeheartedly admire their startup strategy and what they were trying to do because they had the money to throw around. So they threw money at Adrian Broner. Remember, he got all disrespectful and everything. They threw money at Deontay Wilder. They threw money at um at uh Peter Quillen. You know, they threw money at uh, did I say Keith Thurman? And then also you have to look at how many plans of Al Heyman's they messed up. So it looked like they were kind of doing it, you know, intentionally. But as it stands right now, you know, they're not together. And now that foot in the door that they had with HBO, which was Gary Shaw Productions, who had Brian Jennings fighting on HBO twice. And then you had um, to, um, Tomas Delorme, who's been on HBO multiple times. Now, that doorway is somewhat closed, but could Andre Ward get on HBO? And we know Andre, I mean, could Andre Ward be still that link back to HBO? But we hear an Andre Ward maybe moving over to Showtime. So, this is all a developing situation. This news is actually no more than an hour old, and it just so happened I was just getting here. So, I said, I got the news. You know, did a little bit of investigating. I said, let me get up here and do the video. So, I've already had, actually, I think I answered the questions that you want to be answered. So, Klitschko and Jennings is still on. Andre Ward is still with Rock Nation. And Rock Nation fighters that they have right now, um, they have um, Turiano Johnson. No, not Turiano Johnson. They have Dusty Hernandez, who's undefeated. Um, and he's on the way to the, he's on the WBC trail, by the way, 140 or 147, I forgot. Tommy Rayon, who put on a good fight, even though he lost. Um... And basically, that bread and butter is Andre Ward. You know, Gary Shaw Productions, he's cool. And in the media, as of right now, and I'm sure it's probably circulating around the internet by now, is that he said it was a um, it was a um, a cordial departure, that everything was cool. So it wasn't no, you know, I mean, and, and understand, ladies and gentlemen, of course, in the media, they're going to say that. They're going to say that, um, well, everything was fine, you know, we just had some differences. But if I was to put my money on it, and me, you know, Boxing promoter myself and getting there, I would think like, okay, well, Gary Shaw basically probably wanted to control the boxing aspect of things, and maybe you know his plan was to have the Rock Nation name and using the Rock Nation name to get his fighters. You know, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, maybe they try to give him a reduced role, and all this part right here is just speculation. But as it stands right now, how is that going to affect the Klitschko fight? Is it going to be less of an event? No. Not really. You know, is the fight going to still be able to go on as planned? Yes. Gary Shaw has been promoting fights for God knows how long. You know, so, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy. Oh, you know, let me read this for you right here. Shout out to Dan Raphael. He actually put the story out. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to the actual story in the description box so you can read it for yourself. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of Rain the Rainbow, and I'm going to actually read it to you. So this is from February 2nd, 2015, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right now, it is 5.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The marriage between rap mogul Jay-Z's Rock Nation Sports and newcomer to boxing promotional scene and longtime promoter Gary Shaw lasted barely a month. Rock Nation Sports entered the boxing scene, I mean, entered the boxing business in August, and the day before promoted his card on January 9th at the theater in Madison Square Garden, New York. Shaw sold his company to Rock Nation Sports and went to work for it. Shaw had moved into Rock Nation offices in New York, brought his staff with him and worked, and worked with the car last month. He was in the process of finalizing an assignment of many of his fighters' contracts from his old company, Gary Shaw Productions, to Rock Nation, which is crazy. So that means basically, like, you know, he got out right at the right time before he signed up his finals order. But things were not going smoothly. There was plenty of infighting in the company, according to various sources, and they decided to part ways in a surprising move. As a part of an agreement, Shaw resigned from the company on Friday and they are in the process of completing a separation deal and Shaw will leave the comp will leave with his fighters and staff and continue doing business as Gary Shaw Productions. We gave it a try and unfortunately it did not work for both parties, Shaw told ESPN.com on Monday. That was February first. It is miserable separation. Rock Nation was very professional at our meeting and they allowed me to keep all my fighters and my company and terminate any agreements we had together. They gave me back my company, which was, you know, that was that was pretty what's up. Rock Nation Sports Works per run bro. I'll let you read the rest of it yourself. <laughs> I'll let you know, read that long ass article. But basically, you know, when it comes to the one part about the end fight, you can kind of expect that because Rock Nation, Jay Z, I'm I'm guessing they probably I'm just this is just speculation, I'm just talking, just running my mouth, just talking as if we were friends or homies, you know. So I'm guessing it was a situation where they brought up Gary Shaw and said, all right, listen, we're going to put you in the office and we're going to come to you for advice. But this is really what we want to do. Gary Shaw, being a more experienced guy, is like, yo, I'm coming to y'all and I've been doing this for so long. I'm going to get my fighters off the ground. You know, so, I mean, if you look at who really losing, nobody is really losing. I mean, I understand you will want all that money and that big name of Rock Nation behind you, you know, and you want to have a raps, the, the, the raps in the middle of uh, the RB concerts in the middle of the, um, in the middle of the events and all that. But at the same time, I'm just thinking, like, you know, at this point in time, Gary Shaw Productions is doing pretty good. You know, and I'm pro Rock Nation. You know, so Rock Nation is in by like right now, look looking at the fact that Rock Nation hasn't even been in it for a year. They've been making some moves. So, you know, you still have to give respect where respect is due. So I'm not looking at this as a situation as being like, you know, oh, they're gonna go down now. I'm looking at it as a situation as when like, damn, when they signed, I mean when they merged with Gary Shaw. That was a power move. You get me? So, I'm going to leave it at that. This is C Street Controversy. This is C Street Controversy Live. Took a little couple days off, you know. I'm going to get some boxing videos out. So, I'm going to start getting them pumping now as usual. People say, where's your boxing videos, T Street? This and that and this and that. Y'all know how I roll. As soon as y'all think that I don't have any videos coming, then I start pumping them out like a madman. So, just let me do my thing. Please subscribe. RealCombatMedia.com. Also, for the full in-depth story. Just check it out right down, realcombatmedia.com. Also, Dan Rayfield's article will be right in the link. T Street Controversy on Twitter, T Street Controversy on Facebook, T Street Controversy got a Facebook like page, T Street Controversy got an Instagram, T Street Controversy's got a Vine, T Street Controversy's got a, a Pinterest, a Ustream, T Street Controversy's got a Tumblr. You know, I can't say T Street Controversy like I used to ever since I got that tooth in the back of my mouth pulled. And that's why I like one side of my face is bigger than the other one. Let me win. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy.